This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Our next guest is Pete Edwards, calling in from Troy, New York. Um, Pete is currently writing a series of circuit bending articles for Make and has also been a guest author on our website. Um, Pete, how are you doing? Hey, hello. You can hear us? How are you doing? We've Hi, made Pete. contact. What's that? You can hear us. We're all we're all clear. I see I see you're in your in your den of, of fun yes. there. You're you're in the workshop. In New York. Awesome. It's all parts bins and stuff behind you. This is where you yeah, build. Yeah, lots lots of uh, electronics and you can't see it off screen. There's a mountain of toys that have been broken and some that are to be worked on. Sure. I and I, I imagine you have a mountain of toys that uh, you've built and 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 play with it too, right? Um. Yeah, I, I, one of the things I love about being up here, I, I moved up from the city, uh, and I have a big studio now, so it's just full of full of instruments, and I'm able to build stuff and set it all up, and um, so I have sort of a plenty of space uh, to experiment. I have like a building area over off camera over here, and then I have sort of a playing area, um, which is uh, off camera as well. But should I should I flip her over? I I'm I'm dying to see it. Um. So here's the. Uh, got some conventional instruments over there, but uh, this is all stuff that I've been building. It's a, sort of a big uh, octopus, uh, you know, spaghetti mess of wires. Um, that's a, and that, that's a, a lot of that's stuff, all your, a lot of stuff built from scratch. What's that? You, you've built all this. These are all your your pieces. Yeah, this is mostly stuff that's built from scratch. And, and then there's a whole bunch of modified stuff. There's like a Nintendo right there. Which you can see with up on the screen With a bunch of banana here. jacks sticking out of the top, um, I think, right? Yeah. Which, and uh, there's a SK1 and Cassio, uh, SK1. electro harmonics pedal that I'm working on right now. Um, so what, what's the, but a lot of it, I've been doing a lot of building from scratch lately. What's that? Uh, what, what's the the flashing globes that I'm seeing on the right? Um, this is the sort of ongoing piece. Uh, it's an analog synth with a light hooked up to it. Uh, so the sound waves Makes are sense. controlling the light. Cool. Can, can uh, we hear? Can we hear some of this in? Yeah. In so I can show you the the basic gist of what I've been doing is uh, trying to get a whole bunch of different things and make them all talk. Right. And everything work together. Um, oh, so I'm going to do a really quick demo of a couple different things. Um, I'll just tell you real quick before I do it. Uh, there's two Barbie karaoke machines right there. There's a light synth. Then this Th those is those are two Barbie karaoke machines. That's sequencing okay. drum synths up here and a modular synth there, and then the Nintendo. So everything's kind of working together, and they're all controlling each other. So I'll uh, turn the volume up so you can hear some of the stuff going. Sweet. Uh, um, so this is the light synth. So, so, you're, so, so that was a very, very brief, yeah, uh, orchestration a very brief of, demo of, of a pieces. few things going together. You, you mentioned uh, the, that was those were Barbie karaoke machines in that silver panel we saw there. Yeah, uh, totally so they, out of their original the cases. Sequenceable screeching sound. Right. Um, <laughs> Poor Barbie I'll screaming. You, I'll zoom into that again. So right in the middle of the pane here um, is. So here's a Barbie karaoke machine, and basically I just took two of those and mounted them, the circuit for those inside here. So I don't know if you can see it, there's the circuit boards, and they're all wired to this panel. And then the sequencer is controlling uh, different uh, weird feedback loops that very, they make. A very high, uh, a high level bend, I mean, I that off. see that. Are... Um, so we're and then we're one other chat. thing hey, Pete, that question. you can't really see that well, but uh, here, that's uh, I'm building a drum brain, so it's sort of a custom drum synthesizer that's using old. Um, oh, sorry, hold on a second. It's it. Um, so that's using chips from old home organs from the 70s. 
Sweet. And that were made to make drum beats, so the rock, bossa nova, oh, yeah, yeah. all of that. I'm using those chips that are obsolete and building this sort of drum brain that you can use to make drum beats that sync with everything else. So there's a lot of different stuff going on in there. Cool. So we had a, one question that came from yeah, the chat. Everyone wants to know um, what the NES is modded to do. Uh, yeah, so um, should I show you what that, what's going on? Sure. Sure, yeah, please. Okay. Um, yes. Well, so what's, what's, the main, what's the question? What is the Nintendo system, the NES? What's well, it doing? All right, so the Nintendo is here, and um, and I have it hooked up so that when the sequencer is on, so I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, yeah, it's a little low. It's, it. it's glitching out different things on the screen. Okay, and, so it, it's uh, doing sequencing visuals to the sound. You can hear it with. Let me see if I can get. Well, oh, here we go. So, ah. if you can see that, um, it's synced up to the drum beat, so that different, it's in sync, it's glitching out different points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it has a, a series of, of, of modified connections inside that are being connected and disconnected depending on the incoming sound? Well, sort of. So. <laughs> Sorry, I'm moving around a little bit here, but um, that's okay. There we go. So there's the Nintendo, and there's a patch bay on it, and that just goes to the video chip. Mm -hmm. And when you connect those points together, it just glitches out the graphics in ways like that. Makes me want to um, blow so, in a cartridge to clean it out, but uh, not when I go. What's that? Feet. No, it's just my instinct is to pick up the cartridge and. <sighs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that that's necessary sometimes, but. Um, really, all you have to do is get in there and clean it with alcohol. You know, okay, I haven't had yeah, to blow on them anymore. But once I got in there and cleaned all the dust out, it works great all the time. Um, but I use this mechanical sequencer here uh, to program rhythms that glitch the Nintendo here to make it do that. Sweet. Um, so, so Pete, how did you just? How did you get into this? How did you just? How did you start doing all this great stuff? Um, like audio. I stuff and... sorry, moving the camera again. Oops, sorry, sorry. Um, I started in like 2000. I got a a big analog synthesizer, and I thought it was really exciting, but they were really expensive. So I started mm -hmm. playing around with uh, you know, those kids' science kits with all the springs on them. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, and that really wasn't. Uh, it kind of sucked. So I started playing around with uh, the speak and spell. Mm-hmm. So you know, it was real like classic. Um real classic circuit bender story. I had no idea what I was doing. I went to art school. I don't know anything about electronics. And then I started playing with the speak and spell and sure. it was awesome. And sure. they're just so, amazing. So how can how can folks sort of crack into that themselves? I mean, the, the, um, well, the speak and spell is a really good place to start and it is for anybody because it's it's easier to, to bend than to not bend basically when you get in there. Because they just don't break and they do tons of crazy stuff. Oh, so speak I'd and say- spells, the, okay. What's that? Yeah, no. Speak and spells. I got you. Yeah, the, the large um, the educational electronic game. Yeah. yeah, so it's just it's a matter of like just lots and lots of experimentation and just getting in there and doing it. And the great thing about circuit bending is you don't have to know what you're doing. You just start touching points together. And and um, the articles, the article series that you've you've been doing um, outlines of some really useful techniques that you can use along with experimental like bending, but um, that are really practical. Like uh, the the first one was to how to find a pitch resistor uh, inside of like a musical toy and replace that um, so you can you can modify it you know um, I actually did bring along a toy I thought we could try since I got you here and your mm -hmm. captive audience here um, got this uh, little this gun action cool Oh, I mean, yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, the articles that I'm doing are sort of like building up, they're cumulative, and they're not straight up about circuit bending, but it's more about just getting people to start interacting with, with audio circuitry. Right, they're, they're really useful and, and practical. They could be used for, you know, anything. It doesn't have to be a, a toy gun or whatever. I just right, wanted but to bring out Those can be pretty gun. rad, too. <laughs> yeah, that's all I was saying. Um, so, um, but, so yeah, I mean, we, we can look at this, and I can probably point out a bunch of the things that you can look for. Um, okay. Just magically open this guy up. 
screws removed. So, got this guy. Zoom in a little bit and get a better view. So this is the internals of our magical phaser. Whoa! It's got a lot going on. It actually doesn't even have LEDs. It's using lamps and it's uh, has a uh, eccentric Whoa. motor there to make it vibrate. But um, um so so we basically want to find. It, it, there's, there's. From reading your article, I, I've, I learned that there's one generally a resistor that's used to um, used to uh, uh, decide the pitch of of the sound that's playing, and mm -hmm. and now I did a little bit of research ahead of time and experimented a little bit and found which one that is, and it's actually this one right here. Can we even see? This one resistor on the board, it's, actually, it's, it's very hard to, to reach the other side of it because the board is very much embedded in here. But, hear this sound. That is really soothing noise. And uh, if I clip this, I hope I clipped the right one, didn't I? Sure, yeah. And then attach a couple of alligator clips to either side of the newly broken points that I've created, and then attach those alligator clips to the middle and one of the side legs of a potentiometer, right there. And I'll pull the trigger. Ranji, will you uh, will you turn the the, the pot while I pull the trigger? Yeah. So we have pitch control. Yeah. yeah. One more. That's pretty satisfying. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> and, and 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 affordable. <laughs> Quite affordable, yes. Um. So 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 thank uh, you, Pete, for that piece of skill set that I just picked up. Um. So we also have uh, Ranji. You brought a. a very bent piece of electronics. That's with you. right. Actually, I just did the exact same simple bend that you've done here. I have a, one of these Chinese Buddha boxes that a friend brought back for me from okay. Hong Kong. They play it's, like a meditative loop. Exactly. If right. I turn it on, so what I did was. I actually soldered in a little, a little jack here that I can use to connect exactly to the pitch resistor, just as you did there. Okay. I, so you basically you have these leads out, so you can do whatever you want with them. Exactly right. So I can have the case closed, but still mess with it, very much like Pete did with his NES and a lot of his other things, where the case is closed, but you've got all these jacks on the outside so that you can plug into it instead of having to dig inside. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's a great thing to do after you've figured out a lot of the bends you want to do on the inside. So I've got here, I can, I can plug it in there, mm -hmm. and then I'll just use the resistance of my fingers to... Now my fingers are replacing the resistor that was in there. And frankly, nice. I've never heard it do that before, so oh, really? that's Something kind of new. astonishing. So that, that was exactly the same bend that you've That's got awesome. there, and it, it works out surprisingly well. Okay. Very, very, very awesome. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, this is, this is a good bend that you can do on just about any electronic sound-making device. Um, so that's sort of one of my favorites for workshops and beginners. And you were asking about good places to start. That's sort of the perfect place to start. Because sure. you can do it to almost any device, and it has such a profound impact on how the, the device works. And it's also so easy to do. Sure. And, uh, and but it can also be developed pretty far in ways that I sort of talk about in the article. It can be a little complicated as well if you want to get more advanced about it. It's, it's totally useful. Um, and your, your next article is going to be covering how do you basically control a physical button, if you will, electronically. So how to control something with anything else, more or less. Something that's right. button-driven, controlling that, that event, that trigger um, via electronic via electricity, right? Right, so yeah, so once you've made this device, you can plug it in and change the pitch, then I'm showing how you can uh, 
like the example I'm using is how to sequence a couple Casio keyboards with an Arduino and then play a drum beat on another keyboard with an Arduino. Or I'm working right now on my, uh, my echo pedal. It has a, a push uh, tap tempo. So I'm syncing that up so you can control it with your modular synth so everything can sync together. There's a lot of different applications. Wait. Um, and then the next article I'm working on currently, while the, other, while the one that we just talked about is being printed, is uh, making a sequencer, a step sequencer, so that you can make you know, rhythms and Perfect. different... These all build on, on one another. This is going to be great. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's the plan. Th thanks for calling in, Pete. That was very cool. And thanks so much.